Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor crew and I'm super pumped to be introducing this brand new series. We're about to kick off all around the three P's of plan produced profit. Now, the XY team spent a lot of time thinking about what makes a great financial advice offering, a great financial advice business. And what we distilled it down to was that there are three key elements that you need to get right to have any level of success in your financial planning business. The first is about planning and how to plan an epic service proposition that's engaging for the people that you want to work with and compelling to drive real results within your business. The second is about producing and that's about being efficient in your business, streamlining things, maximizing benefits of technology to uh, run a a scalable and uh, profitable advice service. And then the third is profit, which is all about getting your message out to a bigger market how do you attract more people into this awesome offer that you're running efficiently and scalably? So I'm taking over over the next 15 episodes. We're going to have 15 advisors, going to be 100% advisors. I've had a bunch of fun with the recordings that I've done so far, the interviews, and, uh, and I've got a few more great ones to come. So I hope you enjoy this series. This episode is proudly sponsored by FE Analytics. Now, a number of XY advisors have already discovered this one-stop easy to use tool that helps with investment research, analysis, portfolio construction, ongoing monitoring, and client reporting. Find out how FE Analytics can help you improve your business process, manage your existing client base, and win new business by contacting Bruce Jenner via bruce.jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R, at financialexpress.net, or visit financialexpress.net for more information. Well, Mr. Bates, thank you for joining me for the second time for Mm -hmm. this series. We're talking today as part of the the, uh, the Plan Produce Profit series and, and talking all about um, the, the third P, which is profit and really getting your message to the masses, something that you've done uh, done very well. So, mate, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, keen to talk today really about your journey. I know that you've done a whole, whole bunch of different uh, things, but... Um, you know, it's been, it's been a transition, you know, advisor doing mortgage broking, now focusing more on the mortgage broking, still a bit of advice, um, canopy private, which I'm still a little bit, uh, you know, I've got, I've got the domain on back order just in, just in case you let it slip for a, for a little bit, mm-hmm. um, now into, into Wealthful and, uh, mate, keen to talk about the journey for in, in how you've got your, uh, your message out out there so uh mate maybe just just run us through the last you know for five ish years and uh uh like what but, but the the core sort of progression in terms of how now you you're uh you know this the superstar that is chris bates it's <laughs> a big question just go back five years um i mean yeah i mean i started a business you got to generate leads or customers uh and you start with nothing and you look at ways to do that didn't really get too excited about, you know, trying to go out and build professional partners um, and started reading about content marketing. And that was probably the start of the business about five years ago now. Um, and then it was blogging and then it was kind of, that didn't really work. And then went to short snippets on LinkedIn mainly. Um, then last year, 18 months ago, probably now, crazy, uh, started a podcast. And then now we're going to kind of try to do some videos and they're kind of working a little bit. So yeah, it's, I mean, and then, I mean, I guess through that journey is, it, yeah, I guess it just creates more awareness and I enjoy it. Yeah. It's an interesting, the, the, the business of financial advice I find generally is like an experiment, right? Like every person's different. You can tweak one little part of what you do and then it, it drives a slightly different result. And, uh, you know, if it's a, if it's a positive result, then you do more of it. If it's a negative result, then you do less of it. Yeah. Business is the same that you, you do the thing, but the, the land of marketing, I think on it, on its own is, is exactly the same that you do, you know, we, and this is you know, admittedly, this is the second time I'm having this conversation, but you do some stuff and you, you know, it, it doesn't get the responses that you want. Uh, you tweak it slightly, pivot, different channel, different message, different approach. 
uh, and then you know if you're committed to following it through that it, then you you know you can pivot and pivot and pivot until you uh, you know get some good stuff happening yeah you love the word pivot don't you pivot and pivot yeah and pivot and pivot <laughs> so are you paying for this marketing pivot. um pivot. yes um i mean it's it's it is kind of true i think i didn't really i couldn't foresee how writing a blog would lead to a customer and you know until i went through that experience and a customer reaches out to the website and says read your blog want to chat to you and i'm like oh right so i've just turned that's that effort was actually rewards and then when you start to see that happening quite regularly you're like this is working and then right i'm going to double down on this because this is actually going to drive my business and that's pretty much what did um and that's kind of my only sole way of getting business probably was through linkedin um and then off the back of client referrals because you get you're building a client base and then also referral partners would refer um where they've now built up enough trust that they I'm staying consistent, authentic to my message. And now they're thinking, actually, I wouldn't mind sending my clients there as well. Um, so that was kind of, there's been lots of different things, media, uh, lots of different things that popped out off the back of just producing content. For sure. And I think, yeah, one thing leads to the leads to the next thing. And, you know, uh, some of the things are good. Some of them don't, don't work so well. But um, tell me, like, so you, because where you started, I, I feel like getting a lot of traction was really on the LinkedIn uh, channel. You started doing... Um, you told me last time you, you started doing some longer longer form stuff and then that's eventually transitioned. Tell me about that, uh, you know, how it got started, some of the results and, and how, you sh- how, you sh- how you changed or how you evolved over that. Uh, so when I started the business, you know, there was probably a little bit of, I was a bit of a damaged advisor. I'd seen too many things no. that I, yes, uh, <laughs> didn't agree yeah. with, um, you know, first for three years was in the UK and UK banks. Um, so I saw retail advice at its worst. I saw some in- independent advice in the UK, which wasn't great. I saw advice at you know, certain practices and in Australia that I wasn't happy with. And I guess when I started the business, I was like, I want to do it my way, a better way, you know, tell Everyone the world. Everyone else is evil. Yeah. My way. I'm ginger. It's yeah, fine. That's it. Um, and that, that was kind of not working. Right. Um, which it wouldn't, you know, you, you look back on it now and you think that's not going to work, but Oh, mate, it got you a lot of attention. I still remember I, I was looking through the photos, the old XY photos and from the Modern Advisor event. And, uh, mate, when you, you you did your presentation and the first slide was just like all red, no commission uh, in uh, in big, bold letters on the uh, on the screen. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think you probably 90% of the room hated you. The other 10% were just like, fuck, is this guy serious? Um and uh, yeah, I think that, you know that there weren't many people vocally out there, really shouting down the the way that things had been done and and the the results that that had actually led to in some cases in the past. This is uh, was it? it probably would have been about the time of the FOFA reforms before the before all of the stuff with the um, LIF and yeah the ASIC review into the insurance industry as well. And uh, yeah, I, I think like. You know, you were out there banging the drum, and it, it you know, uh, well, I don't want to, ta- I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, it, it, it generated a lot of attention, a, l- a lot mm. of attention from advisors, a lot of attention from the media. I think they liked it, a lot of attention from those, uh, from all, from uh, the uh, old codgers with too much time on their hands that sit there just trawling um, the IFA comment section of the thing. But uh, mate, anyone uh, anyone listening, I would highly encourage you to look up the archives of the IFA and, <laughs> and check out some of those things. Some of them were hundred, hundreds and hundreds of comments. Um, quite amusing, quite amusing reading. But uh, yeah, thank you for that all of that entertainment. I suppose just just from yeah. That. I mean, you think you can change, or you think you can you feel like there's a better way, or you feel like the industry needs to move forward, and then you go to an event and the room's full of grey hair. Um, and people want to keep doing what they've done for the last 20 years, you can only go to so many events till you realise that it's not going to change. You can't change it. So kind of just go be happy with what you're doing and just focus on what you want to do and your little journey. And that's when I just kind of switched. It was kind of almost like a, a day thing. I just switched and said, well, that's, that's done now. I've said what I need to say. I'm just going to do it my way now. And um, I just started posting on content that, you know, made it all positive. Talked about well-being, talked about things that I'm passionate about, things and um, just see how that goes. And then that's when it's kind of all kind of shifted. And 
sure. you know, to be honest, I haven't really kind of gone back into that world um, because, you know, I don't really more need mellow, to. More mellow in your old age. Mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, so but the, the comment, you did get a lot of attention with the, with the, some of the link, LinkedIn content, especially some of the property. Obviously, you know, you, you've got a very strong, uh, like a big part, probably the main part now of your business is around mortgage broking and, yeah. the, and the property planning piece. Uh, and some of the, the, the things, like the articles that you put in on LinkedIn were getting a, a crazy amount of traction. What made you change, what made you change the tone of things when you are getting that much attention? Um, so the property is a big, it's it's you know it is a big discussion it's kind of the australia's favorite pastime to talk about it right so mm. it is a very topical thing i'm not getting people to talk about something that, that's not they're not talking about anyway right so um and then when i said look i'm not going to stop stop working with kind of older clients you know it's all 30s 40s couples families no clients in their 50s you know passed on clients that were in their 50s to other advisors and just said look that's it i at that point just said, well, what's their biggest problem property? I just said, I'm just going to double down on becoming the expert or a trusted advisor in that space. There's not really many out there. Um, and I'm just going to post a lot about property and filter it with lots of other things around the side, the side so it doesn't get too boring, but I want to keep clocking there. And to be honest, the good thing about content is, you know, I saw someone post this the other day, is, you know, it has to be a bit off center. It has to be a little bit challenging and a bit, confrontational or a little bit you know making someone think otherwise it's not content it's just news reading it's just reporting it's just yes it, it has to actually be something that's directing a conversation in a certain way and the good thing about property is it's so heavily unregulated and there's so much mis-selling of products yes. is it's very easy to call out and it's and and so what i was doing is calling it out and that would get a lot of traction because mm. You would get, you know, off the plan sellers, house and land packages, developers, mm. um, all these people who are heavily conflicted and who are doing the wrong thing would want to defend their turf. And I'd be like, well, no, it's not right what you're doing. Um, you know, these are the reasons why. Yeah, $40,000 commission, what's wrong, what's wrong with that? Exactly. Um, and, all, and they, you know, it's, it's not ignorance, it's bliss, to be honest. I don't think they, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They do know what they're doing. Um, and... That's and you know, I, you yeah, know, people would say they're trying to make money to feed their families and things like that. But I thought you can do something else um, rather than you know stitch people's financial futures up. So for sure, yeah, I've seen too many people that have uh, you know got really shit results and and for for an extended period of time, you know, pro uh, property is one of those things that you buy a bad one, it's expensive to buy, it's expensive to sell. You don't want to lose money, uh, so it ends up being this just years of, of pain and um, you know mediocre results as well as stopping you from actually doing something else like buying a good property or or doing investing or because it's tying up your cash flow and all of the things so okay so you've got this you you you, you know sort of plugging away long form content linkedin um and you and so you change to the to these posts that were just like you just basically fill up the like do a little blog or like do a blog a short blog put it into the thing tidy it up i remember we, we had this chat a little while back and and then you were, you were, it was more positive in nature, but yes. also <laughs> less combative. Um, but but I think that when we spoke, and I can still remember a little coffee we had up at up at MLC there back at the time that you when you first kicked off Wealthful, and it was really you were doing you were doing some property, and then you were doing a second when you were committed. You you know do every day that was like one was property, one was like life or like yeah. psychology or well being or you know. Uh, the, the stuff that sits around the finances that that impacts that. So, was that the same time that you transitioned? For like, did it line up evenly with transitioning from the canopy, the independent financial advice, uh, and and the like, the the more combative stance to the more positive stance? Was it the same, or is it uh, just similar? The, uh I think I changed my content first and then I realized that Canopy Private, uh, I know you love that name, uh, does not- It's, good. it's um, like a net support, you know, that's the, that's the, you can just walk the tightrope and the canopy's there. It's like, why would you change that? That's all right, mate. It's, uh, I'll sell it to you. Um, so, but no, but I realized that that title, that positioning, that brand wasn't really what the direction that I wanted to go in. And um, 
then I started brainstorming. That's when Wealthful came up. And then, you know, at that time I was chatting to Lee Shadell actually. Um, Shout out Lee. And, you know, our view at the time was that advice was going to shift to more well-being focused, to more uh, mindful sort of, uh, you know, lifestyle sort of balance, you know, uh, you know, responsible investing, you know, this is kind of the next transition for advice. And so- The next pivot even. Yeah, that's what we thought it was gonna go into. And so uh, that's when I changed, we were going to potentially try to attract other advisors at that point in time to go yeah, into this. That. Yeah, um, And uh, yeah, and that's, that's kind of, and that's when I kind of, you know, I just went for it, I guess, um, in terms of that direction. And what was the learning from that? From the... Like in, like in terms of that transition, because you still, I remember like when you first kicked off those, the, sh- the long short form content on LinkedIn, so just posts that were like mini blogs, mm. you're getting some crazy traction through there. And that I feel like that was sort of around the time that your business really started to do yeah. very well, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, the learning in terms of the rebrand was... I don't think when I started the business, I went, you know, I didn't have the confidence to go what I, what I, what I really wanted, but that was younger clients. Mm. And so, you know, I still wanted that, you know, 50, 60 year old sort of client, but then I still wanted to work with younger clients and that was a conflicted, you know, it wasn't going to, that's going to sail me in two different directions. So that the learning out of that was the, just building the confidence and going for what I wanted. Um, probably should have done that from the start, but it's hard to do that when you start to yes. just really go for a, for a market. Um, I mean, the, the learning through content was just, you know, it was working, so just keep doing it. That's kind of the, just stay consistent, stay authentic, you know, don't just post stuff that for the sake of it, because I did that a couple of times and those those posts wouldn't get zero traction. And yeah. It was actually brand damage, so I would just delete the post. Um, you know, after, you know, maybe four or 500 views, if there's no likes or it's not hitting, there must be a reason for that. Maybe it's boring, maybe it's badly worded. Maybe it's just not valuable. Maybe it's self-promotion. Just delete it, and there's mm. lots of little learnings across the the way. Sure. And so, how do you like? If you think back to that time, how do you manage to stay consistent in the uh, like in in the approach and go for it? Because I think that's the challenge for a lot of advisors. That you you know, like it's great. You can do all of these things. You can do social media. You can do the blogs. You can do the posts. You can do the videos. You can do all the things, but it's hard to actually build them into a, a way where you get, and I know that I tend to do that to a degree as well. You do a bunch of stuff and then the stuff gets results, you get busy, then it's, then you stop doing the stuff. But you managed to make it, keep it very consistent for, for a fairly extended period of time. How did you go about sort of building that into you, your business? Is it a systemized thing or? I guess I just put a value on it because that's what was driving the business. So if I knew if I just stopped turning the tap on, then new clients wouldn't come, right? And so. Um, that was my number one lead source. So I knew that if I, you know, back down from not posting, that's not going to get the business in the direction that I wanted to. So I had a real big motivation to do that. And, um, and I was only doing one thing and that's the thing. I was only doing LinkedIn posts. I'm not doing Facebook posts. I'm not doing Instagram. Mm. I'm not doing videos at this stage. I wasn't doing a podcast. And so that's, and then the podcast was such a big effort as well to get going. Um, and now it's easy. So now we just record, you know, two half days a month and that's it, that's all I do. And then that goes out and everything else is kind of done. So, you know, that to me is not a big drag anymore. Now the videos are one day a month now as well. And that's not a big drag. So it's kind of mm. just, I don't know. Yeah, nail, what, nail one, one thing Just one thing at down. a time. Like yeah. that's, that's what it is, you know. I found that I, when I started the business, I got distracted with a lot of that stuff that you're trying to do Twitter and Instagram and um, Facebook and the ads and you know all of the things, but uh, I, I don't think you can give give any one thing the attention enough to you know make it good, make it systemized, and make it land and actually engage. Because I think that for the one of the things that I found, and I wish that this wasn't the case, but unfortunately it is, is that really to do content, to do really engaging content, you've got to engage with people. Like you've got to you've got to engage with the with the content and. Um, you know, I, I think to to respond to people and to to get in there to to actually, um, yeah, I, I I think that people, especially you end up in a where people are following an an idea or an ideals uh, that they need that. I I think that I think it's it makes it easier to get the traction when you've got the person or the people that that are supporting the the ideas behind it. 
You do create a little bit of a tribe, and then that tribe will naturally defend you, and will uh, will be, you know, the ones that you know the groupies that will probably always like. Um, and so, if you do create that, um, mainly that's through just producing consistent content that they're liking and they're following and they're looking out for. Um, then, yeah, I guess that's you know you need to have that. Otherwise, but you got to build it, so you just got to keep going for it. Be there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What do you reckon? So we talk about a few things, you know, being consistent, having your message, being a bit off center, um, engaging. What do you think is the most important thing that you need to get right to be successful in in getting a message that actually gets cut through and 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 builds traction? You just got to have the be very clear on who you're trying to help and be on the right platform for them. So, I mean, who I want is kind of professionals, 30s, 40s, switched on, you know, self-educating kind of people where they're gonna digest content. Well, that's probably LinkedIn. And so I've just, and I don't really wanna pick up clients in their 50s, 60s. I don't wanna, you know, I'm just thinking about producing content for them. And uh, it's just makes it much easier. So if you try and produce content for everyone, you're not gonna get any cut through. Yes. So I guess it's just really picking your market and just picking where they are and just consistently trying to dish out content for them. And after a while, hopefully, you know, they start reading. Right. And what do you reckon, what's the, the main thing that people get get wrong if it is, you know, di- different to that when it, when it comes to... Because obviously everyone's out there, like everyone knows that, oh, yeah, you, you do this and you see people that are getting, you know, a bunch of success from, from driving content, but... That uh, you know, obviously not not everyone's doing it well. What do you th- what do you think the main mistake that people make is that when they try to go down this path? Um, it's not about you. It's not about your brand. It's not about you getting something by producing content. You're actually just trying to produce content that other people will find valuable, and that's it. Like there's no call to action. There's no I've got this rate. You should come see me. There's no. I'm really good at giving insurance advice, you should come see me, or I know what the best super fund is, come see me. You know, like as soon as you do that, you're doing selling and that's not content, that's selling, that's marketing. And so, you know, you actually lose trust that way. People will actually unfollow you. They won't read what you write. So, and the other thing is just being consistent and giving it time. Like the reality is you do a post, you're not gonna get any clients. It's not till you do 150 posts. Yeah till you get clients. So you've just got to be committed to the end result and just know that it'll come. And you've got to find it enjoyable, like actually producing content or writing something that you, uh, it actually is quite fun, I think. I think it's quite fun to articulate Mm. your thoughts, think something through, check, validate your research. um, Because you've got to be careful that if you write something that's not true or that can be pulled apart, there's someone there dying to tap away at the keyboard to yeah. to find a hole in what you say. So, you know, that's and that's fun to actually think, actually, no, what am I right? Is my thinking right? This is what I believe. Mm. And so I guess that's the part of the process. Yeah. And so what I like but you, you you talk about not uh not having like a call to action or not not selling selling. But I think you you can, right? Like you can you can do content is content and marketing is marketing. Like you can do you can do both. I, I don't think really good marketing will lead to building a massive following, but if you've got really good content, if you if you put, like I know with our stuff, we'll put content, 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 and then you go, okay, I'm doing this event, or there's here's this this thing that's an offer or something like that. Like pe- a lot of people will engage with the content and then they reach out based on the content, but you can also, doing that doesn't, you, it's not that you can't, like you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't ever promote anything. It's just that you can, you you don't you shouldn't have a call to action on on every post that's like you know book a fifteen minute yeah. consultation. Yeah, I mean promoting an event's fine. Like that's just giving people another way to digest your content mm. in, at an event. So that's that's all good. But you know maybe offering a free guide or something that's that's fine. But you're just trying to add value. But then you know come and call me. You know I need to speak to you. Sort of that mm. push just not going to work. I don't think. Yeah, I, just, I agree. I, I I it's one thing that I've found that it can just be tacky and I think the people know that you just like if you're just always there you're going like uh, you know here's a tax tip here's a property tip here's a mortgage tip here's a here's a you know how to do this how to do that how to do this how to do that people know that you're running business mm. and you build that relationship build the the um, 
the yeah the, the 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 digital rapport with people and then when it comes time to do the thing that they're they're there and you're you're all you were always like after a period of time i think i find it becomes that you're you're actually the person that they're going to go to it's just that they're not going to anyone at right now well that's that's 100 percent. so like you know there'll be people of i can see i've connected with them 18 months ago and they've reached out to me today let's call it yeah so and they would have probably been digesting my content for 18 months but now's the time when they're ready to go yeah and you know lots of people with advice you know you'll they'll make an inquiry and then they go cold again which i'm sure we've all had um you know because it was it did get to number one on the priority list which was finally yeah. in a gap in their life and then bang life's taken over again it's gone back down to seven yes. um and so you know you can see that with sometimes with new clients so i guess it's uh yeah you're just trying to be front of mind with it and yeah that's a long game mm. and so tell us about the the podcast so you you know you're plugging away on linkedin and it's working what was the what was the thought process behind that how did you go about it because I know you're getting some pretty like big numbers now in terms of the the views and and uh, and stuff off the back of it. So, um, I knew I needed to do something else from producing LinkedIn content. <clears throat> Probably didn't have the guts to do video. I didn't know how I wanted to do video. And you didn't have two videographers to follow you down no, the street I didn't have at that, that. point. I'm, I've got one. Uh, Drop the second. Uh, it was a bit unnecessary. Uh, but you know, and then I thought, well, I've got to have a bit of an angle here. It's probably better to have a co-host. It gets a bit boring talking to one person, <laughs> <laughs> like now. Uh, just kidding. And uh, no, but yeah, have a have a okay. co-host, and um, yeah, and then basically run a, you know, around property because that's kind of what I wanted to focus on. So I met a buyer's agent who already knew, and then yeah, we we formulated. We didn't actually go ahead because we actually had three or four brainstorming meetings where we were, let's have a different angle to this. Mm. I said, let's get Simon Russell in first. Let's just do an interview with him. Let's go on the behavioral side, see how that goes. And then that's when it kind of all kind of came out and we went, actually, this is where we want to kind of go on it. It's just, and that's where the elephant in the room idea came from um, off that podcast. So we didn't actually really even know when we first started. Um, and it's been good. It's just been a bit, it's, it's, for me, I just think it's great networking. You know, I get to reach out to, you know, experts and the top of the tree in all different parts of the property market um, or, or economics and ask me if they want to come on the show and then you know 30 percent of them say yes yeah um, so and then you get to meet four good people every month you know so that's uh and it does you know if you the good thing is we're being quite controversial with the content we are we're not letting um any of the new sort of property world um impact us and so you know a lot of our list we're getting quite a a good following that are very committed and have learnt lots. Um, I mean, even today there was a guy that sent me some pretty strong feedback when we were pretty going quite hard on the negative gearing policy. <laughs> um, and he so, like this long email that you guys are sounding like you were, you know, supporting labour and blah blah blah. And um, you know, and then he emailed me again today and said your content, you know, the podcast has got much better. I'm loving it again. And yeah, so you know, we've had people who've listened to obviously every episode, and there's like 90 episodes. So well. Yeah, I had uh, Glenn James on for this a, a little while back. Oh, yeah. uh, he obviously does a lot of stuff in the podcast space, and I, I think it's true of podcasts. But, but I think podcasts are probably a bit more personal because you're in you're in people's heads. But um, I, I think it's partly true of all content, and and when you're doing content marketing as a strategy, that you can you essentially train people into the into the stuff that you want. And if people hate your ideas. They just don't engage with your stuff, so it's not mm. like you're going to have someone follow you for a year and then or follow your stuff for a year and then reach out and and you go, oh, um, you know, I'm a socialist and I hate negative gearing, mm. and then they go, oh, that's um, you know, no, because they because they obviously they they know what you're about. Mm. They know, they in some level they they're sort of buying in or they're they're in agreement with your. Uh, stuff, mm -hmm. so that then they're they're already uh, trained trained quite well as well. I, n I notice it a little bit with some of the video content that I've done, and then people you do a call with someone, and then they say some of the stuff that you've said, and you're like, yeah, oh yeah, this is cool. Like, what do you want? Oh yeah, I want lifestyle balance mm -hmm. or a life not limited by money or something. And they're like, oh yeah, that's sort of what we do. <laughs> good. Uh, so I think it's a good way to see you you know you're, you're immediately eliminating the people that are not. Um, not going to gel with your with your message and and what you're about so mate tell me um you know that obviously it's, it's been a, a you know a, a substantial sort of journey what's um 
Is there anything that, that, that you found that worked really well, like sort of unexpectedly? I mean, the podcast is that. I mean, I didn't, when we get inquiries, I don't really ask where did you hear from us? Was it Google or was it et cetera? But I will always ask on the call, um, you know, how did you hear about us? And, you know, whether it be LinkedIn or the podcast. And the podcast are, you know, so far down the buying journey or the trust journey that, you know, it's not even a case of explaining what we do or anything like that. They just, you know, ready to go. Like you say, talking the lingo. Already, They already apologize sometimes, which is crazy because... And they say, look, and I've already got a poor asset and I did this wrong and I did that. And I'm like, yeah. And like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, well, you know what I mean? Like they've already kind of like almost trained themselves up on it. So that, that to me was a huge learning that just how powerful the podcast was. Um, yeah. Awesome. And on the flip side then, uh, anything that, that, that you're really expecting to work that didn't? Um, I mean, long form articles, I think uh you know didn't really work i mm-hmm. think but i haven't gone back there and for a few years so maybe you know with a bit more of a following they'll probably make it more tra- traction um from a content sort of marketing space i mean yeah i haven't really gone and paid any advertising i haven't done any paid advertising at all so i haven't really got any i'm being burnt i haven't gone to any marketing companies and paid two thousand dollars a month for seo and found out that didn't work or mm. um Facebook ads, man, fuck, that's a time vortex that you just, not even just a money thing, like, and I've wasted a little bit of money, not that much, like, a, a, you know, a few thousand bucks over the few, uh, over the last few years, but just the time involved with all of those sorts of things. And I think that, especially in the content marketing space, that you can't, you know, Glenn James, he's probably the only one that's doing it really, really well. Uh, well, actually, no, that's, that's not true, but um, there, there are a few people doing it really well, but not many, but they mm. sell the dream. It's so easy to get caught up in the, uh, in the digital marketing, you know, uh, make money in your underwear, don't have to deal with anyone, just, you know, uh, do your Facebook ads and sell your online course and, and do it. But I find that for a lot of service businesses, it's, it's really, uh, you know, that there's a course, the core of your business is a service. Right. So, uh, it's, it's, there's, a, there's always going to be a jump between a, you know, a $50 online course and a, and a massive, um, you know, like it, it, mm. helping people buy a million dollar property, helping people create a financial plan for the rest of their life and spending, you know, thousands of dollars on, on doing that, that, uh, I think, yeah, it's easy if you get too swept up in it. I know that this definitely happened to me that you try and create all these, uh, you know, uh, training programs and I wasted all this time, Facebook, uh, advertising and never got any results whereas if you mm. just find you know find the channel where people are and you can do it natively you know, linkedin is, is obviously a good one or i know a lot of people there's success on instagram or facebook jess and glenn who we had on right at the start of the series have done really well um with you know getting traction on their facebook and stuff that you don't need to do that and i think you got to do the right the right thing at the wrong time is also the wrong thing when you got like you know you got 50 people that are underneath you and then maybe there's more of a, mm. a, a you know the resources to support that but uh yeah i think that it's, it is easy to, to 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 burn a heap of time doing the, the something that's a decent idea but just at the wrong time and and not in the way that needs to be to actually drive results yeah i think that's hard as a, a small business owner when you've only got limited time and that's your number one resource to grow the business you know i i remember i looked at so many different like shiny object syndrome with tech you know how mm. can i systemize my business but it's just me that's like build a, <laughs> build a process for myself like yeah. uh you know and i would look at all the latest tech and you know crms and digital signing tools and you know i'd get excited by all that but you know i was wasting time you know and uh you know even thinking about where the future of advice was i you know would spend a lot of time researching robo advice digital advice tools Mm. um what's happening overseas i mean i've got a lot of knowledge there now that you know a lot of that stuff's not something to be worried about that they're actually building it for advisors as well um and it's you know it's good to have that but you know it was probably a lot of wasted time as well because you know it's yeah it's not something that's now it's a it's a thing that you can confront when it's there and there's so many it's like you know with clients i think that you help them Think, a bit, think through problems and you find that there are some clients and they get so caught up trying to think about the next step and the next step and the step after that that mm. they paralyzes them from making a decision now where sometimes you just got to, yeah, let's let's be clear on what the next step is and probably think it 
one or two steps ahead of that to make sure you're not shooting yourself in the foot but really yeah. like the pondering the you know 2050 that it's uh, probably not going to be a positive impact on your business right now yeah I, I that was probably another part in my early years of advice i would try to build these beautiful plans and forecast and spreadsheets and you buy this then and you sell that then and you i mean like it's i just you know that whole kind of cash flow really doing a 30-year plan for someone like Mm. you know i don't think it really works as you know i think that just like you say just focusing on what you can do in the next three years is a much better mindset and making people make smaller but you know bigger but much more deliberate steps is you know what a good advisor does yeah for sure i think it's like you like i just did a review this this uh, this morning with the with the client and and we've been working together for three and a half years and uh, every time we do the the review things are a little different like the, the in terms of what she wants to do because she's changing the world's changing technology's changing her job's changing what she thinks in the future is changing her relationships with other people are changing as well so it's um you know you you definitely want to be thinking a step ahead yeah but also like know what the next step is but then really you just have to be you know have the flexibility and go well making sure that that step is for her and i'm like you know she wants to buy a tiny house i'm like well you buy a tiny house that's cool but it's going to potentially that's going to stop you like you could do that now you could go buy a you know a little block of land and get your little tiny house and a tiny tiny house and then put it put it on there but if you decide that you want to buy an investment property, then it's potentially it's going to limit you. You're going to have to save up, you know, yeah. a much bigger deposit then for your uh, because it's impacting your borrowing capacity. So you don't want to ignore the stuff, but also you just like deal with deal with the next thing and then wait until the world changes so that you can think about what the thing that's important to you after that mm-hmm. as well. Introduce it a ripper ride. Ripper ride? Yeah. What's that? It's like the Airbnb for camping. Oh, that's what I said to her Airbnb. I didn't have uh, the Ripper yeah, Ride tool. I'll have to ask her. Mate, tell me if you... Um, <laughs> thank you, Ripper Ride. I'm spending too much time trolling the internet, mate. Um, so tell me, if you were to go back to the start and uh, clean slate, what would you do differently? Uh, I probably would have just went for the one market that I wanted to work with first. I felt like for the first 18 months in it, I was kind of drowning. Um all the challenges of starting a business, limited cash, um, you know, limited clients, uh, didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and probably for the first two years, it was kind of torn between one, trying to build a FIFA service, kind of bigger advice practice, or two, kind of work with younger people. And so if I could go back then, I would have probably just went for working with younger people and had the model I've got now around, a lot of it's around, is mortgage broking, um yeah that's what i would have done you know yep and what have you got what's next on the horizon any uh you know from a from a from a like a marketing from a from a you know building the building the tribe further side of things uh so the next thing's video newsletters so every week uh a video will go out to clients basically documenting everything that i've learned this week that i think they need to know mm. and that'll go out for you know every week to as many followers I can kind of get on that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's, that's probably the next thing, but the videos, you know, did another 12, 12 on Friday. I haven't got, literally got the email just then. It'll be interesting to see how they come out. Um, so yeah, hopefully do videos every month, keep doing the podcast, keep doing posts. Um, and then, yeah, might be have a new business partner as well Ooh. that would come on and yeah, he's a bit of a gun in other social, like Facebook and Instagram, and oh yeah, and so a mortgage broker. Yeah, Ooh. and so can we play hangman with the name? Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, and that could um, that would be good because uh, that would open up. Doors. Oh man, come on, you can't leave me hanging like this. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's just as as a you know, like because you're always kind of working on these things. So that's uh, something that could open up or expand the brand quite massively sure okay well we'll have to save that one for the next podcast that's, it seems that's it we'll see how we go mate uh mr bates thank you very much we've, we've got the blink list version i think today because we uh we did it we did thrash this out in extended chat uh, <laughs> j- just last week but mate before we go uh, a couple of quick ones for you what's biggest biggest oops moment or stuff up 
Uh, it would, and it's kind of happening a little bit now, which is quite frustrating, um, is when the business is not delivering on the service proposition just through growth and not being able to, you know, turn around, you know, clients in time frames that I think are respectable. Um, and yeah, there was probably a few times over the last five years where it all just got a bit too much and yeah, and not wasn't delivering basically. Um, and I feel like there's a whole kind of self-sabotage thing that starts to happen and, you know, it gets stressed and burnout, um, et cetera, like that. So I'd say there's been a few moments in the business that that's happened. And it's kind of happening again now. Like we've just got a ridiculous amount of work, especially because the property market's kind of changing mm-hmm. and people are wanting to buy and wanting to move and urgency's there. Um, and it's trying to get, you know, things through the river. So I guess the, the biggest thoughts made is it's just been better at managing those those challenging times yeah it's an interesting one that you you know you push hard and harder you know as a small business owner especially when you're in that in the you know when you've got a smaller team and you're you know you're pushing 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 trying to get the work and then it's like they say that you should hire six months ahead of of when you should but who's going to do that when you're you know you're you're paying the wages for for six months waiting for the business to come then it's sort of this catch 22 and i know i've been there we are there uh, same thing that you've got to, and then you've got to furiously sort of backfill team, process, systems, IT, all the things that uh, that it's definitely a challenge. So, mate, when you crack that code, just uh, mm. just let me know. That'd be I think good. It's just something that keeps on getting bigger and bigger <laughs> problem. Uh, best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, it's probably just you're on your own journey. You know, your only answer to yourself. That sort of belief or you know thought process. I think. Um, you know, I guess I just, I just think that's really it, really. I don't think you really should worry too much about anyone else, really. You know, if you're happy with yourself and how you're treating the world and what you're doing, um, that's enough. Um, and so I feel like I, you know, especially in the start of the business as well, I think anyone, any profession, there's a lot of pressure from work, I don't work, family, friends, partner, society, industry. Yourself, imagine. Yourself, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, end of the day, that, that all doesn't really matter. You just you got to answer to yourself. So, I think that's the uh, the best advice I've ever got, mate. With wise wise words there. Last one. Uh, what's your spirit animal? Last time I said panda bear, so I probably should say the same. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Why? I don't know. I just always loved panda bears as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Bates, thank you very much for joining us, mate. Uh, Appreciate it. Yep, thank you.